All right, in this video, I want to continue our exploration of linear regression. So I'm going to stick with the same example where we grabbed 11 days at random at some kid's hot chocolate stand and tracked the daily high temperature at that day and how many cups of hot chocolate that kid sold. And we took all that information. We determined that the explanatory variable, aka the cause, was temperature and the response variable, aka the effect, was the sales. And then the logic, I don't know if you bought it or not, was that it was hard to analyze the data just by looking at the numbers, or at least maybe you can imagine a situation where it would be hard to analyze the data just by looking at these numbers over here. Um, so we created this scatter plot. The hope is with this scatter plot, we can talk about with the concept of this video, <clears throat> which is correlation. So maybe a prompt like describe the correlation in this scatter plot you have up here. So the idea with correlation is you're trying to figure out whether you have negative correlation, positive correlation, or possibly neither. And all negative correlation is, is the general trend that when you look at your graph, the dots tend to get lower when you go to the right. So like in this case, I would say we have negative correlation because generally speaking, when you go to the right, the dots are lower down. Not always, right? This dot, for example, is further right of this dot, but it's higher up. And similarly, this dot is higher up than this dot. There's certainly lots of examples where when you go to the right, dots get higher. But generally speaking, the overall trend of our data points is that when you go to the right, they tend to get lower. And that means that you have negative correlation. Conversely, if when I went to the right, they tended to get higher. So imagine a different scatter plot that kind of sort of looks like this, maybe, right? The dots in blue kind of looks like when I go to the right, they get higher. Not in every instance, right? Compare these two, for example. But generally speaking, when I go to the right, the dots get higher. If that's the case, you have what's called positive correlation. But I don't in this case. In this case, I have negative correlation. If you ask me to describe the correlation, my first comment would be that we have negative correlation. It's worth pointing out that sometimes you won't have any correlation at all, or at least no discernible correlation. If the dots are just kind of a scatter of dots, and they don't tend to go up or down when you go uh, read them from left to right, then you can just describe it as no correlation. So negative, positive, or no correlation is what we're looking for so far. Then the next thing we wanna talk about is the strength of the correlation. So this is the direction of the correlation, which can be negative or positive, but we also wanna talk about the strength. And the strength, it's a little bit more subjective, but the idea here is how obvious is it that these dots go down when you look to the right? And I would argue that it's pretty obvious. I don't think many people would look at this and not say that generally speaking, these dots go out go down when you go to the right. I would say not only do we have negative correlation, I would describe it as maybe, I don't know, fairly strong negative correlation. Uh, but here is where I have an issue because if I just try, describe the strength as fairly strong, that's getting really subjective. Like somebody else might say it's really strong and someone else might say eh, it's kind of medium strong, right? It's hard to use these subjective terms. What eventually I want you to be able to do is describe both the strength and the direction. So maybe strong positive correlation as opposed to weak positive correlation or moderate positive correlation, strong negative correlation, weak negative correlation. Maybe we can, for the strength, we can use words like, I don't know, weak, moderate, and strong. Or really what you'll see we end up doing in this class is just saying weak and strong, or maybe moderate would give us more, a better range of adjectives. And in the direction, we want to talk about either negative or positive. Um, and then also keep in mind that it's possible to have no correlation in which you wouldn't really describe the strength, right? If you had no correlation, you wouldn't say it's strong, no correlation. That doesn't make sense. But if you have negative or positive correlation, you want to be able to describe it as uh, strong, weak, or moderate. And I guess you can do this just from the graphs. I mean, I can make a whole bunch of scatter plots for you. Be like, all right, what do you see here? Do you see positive or negative correlation? And do you think that cause correlation is strong or weak? And I would hope that you would say that we have strong, maybe you can spell strong, I can't, positive correlation. Positive because when you read this thing from left to right, it tends to go up. Strong because it's pretty obvious. What do I mean by pretty obvious? We'll compare that to this guy, right? Here's a bunch of dots. I don't know, something like that maybe. Or you describe this. I mean, you might say there's no correlation here, but if you look at it really carefully, you might be able to recognize some positive correlation. It's just really weak positive correlation. Yeah, it tends to go up, I think. I think I can kind of sort of see this trend going on. 
but it's not obvious at all like it was over here. Right, strong positive, weak positive. Here's an example of fairly strong negative. Maybe that's enough of the cases that you can describe the correlation. But you might have an issue right now. You might be like, I thought this was supposed to be a math class. You're really just going to tell me to use my judgment? Like, how are you ever going to mark me wrong if it's so subjective? Like, I thought that was moderate. Who are you to tell me it's not moderate and it's strong? It would be really nice if there was some sort of measure of correlation, some numeric measure. So think like a scale. Think a number line. Maybe we could make that number line go from negative one up to positive one with a zero right in the middle. And zero would indicate no correlation. And positive one would be like the strongest possible positive correlation. And negative one would be the weakest positive possible negative correlation. And they would be kind of on a spectrum here. So maybe here I'd say, well, I have negative correlation for sure and it's pretty strong. So it's pretty close to this negative one. I don't know, maybe my example guess would be, I don't know, somewhere in here, right? Maybe, maybe that's a little too strong. Maybe let's put it right here. Maybe I would guess that it's negative 0.75. I don't know, I'm just kind of making that number up. The point is, it would be nice if my calculator could give me a number that represents my correlation as opposed to me just having to use adjectives like this without, so subjectively, right? It'd be nice if my calculator would tell me, oh, you, your correlation is 0 0.93. And I'd be like, oh, wow, so it's positive and it's really, really strong. And then the next example, my calculator is like, yeah, your correlation is negative 0 point, I don't know, 21. And you're like, oh, it's negative, but since it's so close to zero, it's pretty weak negative. It'd be nice if such a thing existed. It turns out such a thing does exist. It turns out that there is a correlation scale and the, your calculator can give you a value on this scale. It's what's called a correlation coefficient. And that kind of makes sense. Coefficient, you're kind of thinking like a number that measures. And what's it measuring? Well, it's measuring correlation. Correlation coefficient. It's a lot to say, correlation coefficient. It'd be nice if there's a symbol for this. There is a lowercase r indicates your correlation coefficient. And if you force me, I really haven't done this yet, to guess the correlation coefficient here, I say it's negative for sure because we have negative correlation. Um, and I guess it's like negative 0.75, fairly close to negative one because it's pretty strong, but not like negative 0.99 because that would be stuff that almost shows up in a straight line. Um, I'd like to show you how to calculate that correlation coefficient. The thing about the correlation coefficient is your calculator has a setting in it and if that setting isn't on, it won't output this correlation coefficient for you. I'm going to get a whole lot of information about this graph. And one of the things will be the correlation coefficient. But that may or may not show up depending on the settings of your calculator. So first, I want to show you how to alter the settings to make sure this is on. But to be clear, that's not something you'll have to do every time you want to find the correlation coefficient. Just turn it on one time, it's going to stay on for you. Generally speaking, you won't have to do this first step. The first step is to turn your diagnostics on. And the way you turn your diagnostics on, or one way, is it's under the catalog. So above the zero key here is a catalog. The catalog is just a listing of all the functions in your calculator. So since it's above the zero key, I could hit second and then zero to get into the catalog. And then this just lists everything. And they're alphabetical, so you can just kind of scroll down until you get to the diagnostics. You could also, if you're impatient, hit the key that has a D above it and it'll jump down to the Ds. At any rate, Keep scrolling down and eventually you'll see something that says diagnostic off and right below it you'll see diagnostic on. Your diagnostics need to be on in order for your calculator to output your correlation coefficient. So I'm going to select diagnostic on. If they're already on, it's not going to do anything at all. But if it's off, then when I turn it on, now it'll output my correlation coefficient. So if you hit enter, it'll say done. And now whether the diagnostics were on or off before doesn't matter. Now they're on for sure. So you generally won't have to do that. I just wanted to do it one time. Going forward, all you'll have to do is hit the stack key. And then assuming that you already have your data into list, I have my X's in L1 and my Y's in L2. You can just go over to stat and go to calculate. It makes sense that it's calculate. I'm trying to calculate something, specifically a correlation coefficient. The only thing we've done on the calculate menu so far in this class is one variable statistics. We're going to introduce a new function here. It's this fourth one, lin reg AX plus B. The lin reg stands for linear regression. And the form that we'll want our linear regression equation that will be in the next video is in the form AX plus B. Uh, you might have an A plus B X this calculator does. Some don't. To make it easiest, just select the one that says lin reg AX plus B and hit enter. 
If you have a fancy calculator, it'll ask you where your X's are and where your Y's are, and then you can go down and calculate. So if you have an older calculator, you hit stat and you go over to calc and select lin reg A X plus B, you'll have to tell it that your X's are wherever they are, L1 in my case, and your Y's are wherever they are, L2 in my case. So either with this interface or with this interface, it'll spit out my answer. And you're like, whoa, it didn't go over here. What's this mean? This just means I didn't type the data into this list, right? Invalid dimension, if I go to go to here, it'll be like, what do you mean? How am I supposed to calculate lin reg AX plus B? I don't have any information in L1 and L2, right? If you go to stat and edit, I didn't take the time to type my observations into lists. But trust me, if you put your observations into list and then did that lin reg AX plus B, L1 comma L2, you'll get the exact same output that we see here. Note, you see five lines of output. If your diagnostics are off, you only see the top three lines of output, and you gotta turn your diagnostics on. This R right here is this R, and wow, it's way off. This R is negative 0 0.9025. So what you should expect me to ask you to do is, I mean, I'd like it if I could give you a scatter plot and be like, hey, ballpark the correlation, and you'll do that a little bit in the homework you might say oh i have strong negative correlation or maybe you can even look at this and be like ah it looks like my correlation coefficient is like i don't know negative 0.9 or something that's exactly what it is note that i can't have you be too precise with those guesses a minute ago i guessed that this was negative 0.75 and it's not as 0 0.90 uh, you can get an idea of a few different correlation coefficients if you just Google it. So if you just Google correlation coefficient and then click on images, it'll show you a whole bunch of different examples. So you can pick whichever one you want. Here, ignore the lines for now. Um, I have a bunch of dots and it kind of looks like the dots are going up when I read them from left to right. It's fairly obvious. I mean, they're not all in a straight line, but I definitely see some sort of positive correlation here. They tell me R is 0 0.7. Sure, that seems reasonable. Compare that to this one, where yeah, the dots are still kind of sort of going up when you read them from left to right. It, but it's much less obvious here than it was here. This they're telling me is R is 0 0.3. Note a lot closer to zero. And here are the negative versions of these guys. Yeah, they're going down when I read them from left to right, but it's not obvious. They're going down when I read them from left to right, it's a little bit more obvious. Here's some examples of zero, just a bunch of dots with no discernible pattern at all. Here's another example. Right? Here's where R equals negative 0.9. Pretty clearly they're going down when you read them from left to right. Here R is negative 0.5. They're going down as kind of, Somewhat clear, but not super obvious. All right, here's R equals positive one. Not only are they going up, they're going up like in a very straight line. R equals 0 0.9, they're going up and pretty close to a straight line. Here's a bunch of examples. You can kind of get you the ideas of how to get R from a scatter plot. But realistically, maybe more useful than having you ballpark it with your scatter plot, is just calculate it. And so if you understand what R tells you, and I think for our class, maybe an oversimplification is we will say, if R is positive, you have positive correlation. And conversely, if R is negative, you have negative correlation. And then what I'd like to do is make sense of the strength of the correlation. So if you're close to positive one or close to negative one, you have strong positive or negative correlation. But what do you mean by close to, right? That's a little bit subjective. Maybe we should create some arbitrary cutoff, and if you're closer than this amount to that number, we'll say it's strong. And what most books do is they use 0 0.7 as the cutoff. So if my value of R is greater than 0 0.7, meaning over here, this is the strong zone, or if it's less than negative 0 0.7, then this is the strong zone. So strong positive or strong negative. And if it's not, greater than 0 0.7 or less than negative 0 0.7. If it's in between 0 0.7 and negative 0 0.7, I'll refer to it as weak. And really the closer it is to zero, the weaker it is. And this is sort of an arbitrary cutoff. It's not like there's any real difference between 0 0.69 and 0 0.71, but maybe for an over oversimplification as an intro to stats class, we can use these adjectives. So maybe what I could do on a test is I could say, calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient. I right, suppose I asked you to do this, calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient. Well, we can calculate it. That comes out of lin reg AX plus B. What you would need to know is the correlation coefficient is this thing R, but then also interpret. Well, your interpretation can be as simple as it's negative. So I have negative correlation. 
and it's between negative 0.7 and negative 1, its absolute value is greater than 0.7, so it's strong. So my interpretation could just be strong negative correlation. It's worth pointing out that really the correlation that this, this calculates the linear correlation, so it talks about how close your dots are to a straight line. There's other types of correlation, like exponential. Maybe if you had something like these dots, you might see a really strong correlation. It's kind of this exponential growth. We're not gonna do that. We're only gonna deal with linear regression. We're only interested in how close the dots are to a straight line, not to a curve like that. Uh, so from this video, what I want you to get is understand kind of intuitively this idea of correlation. And yeah, if you could tie that together to a scatter plot, that would be ideal. But what I'm telling you is what I'm gonna ask you on a test is to calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient. So make sure you can calculate that out of your calculator and understand the interpretations. And we're good.